Hi everyone and welcome to the virtual quizzes and community engagement with Power Platform session this evening. If you're joining from the UK or from the Asia region, good morning and good afternoon. Um, if you'd like some more information on sessions that we have coming up, you're more than welcome to join our meetup page at meetup.com slash Microsoft Reactive Sydney. The session will be recorded today and will be shared later with you all. Um, and please feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation as the speakers will be answering them for you. So without further ado, I want to hand you over to our first speaker this evening. Um, all over to you, Amy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nadia. And thank you everyone for coming along. As Nadia said, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Or plus five days when you listen to the recording. So I would like to start with introducing myself and also Alice. So today we're going to talk about the virtual quizzes that we've been running in the community. Um, we've used the Power Platform. It's a quiz about the Power Platform, powered by the Power Platform. So a little bit about myself. I am, my fancy title is a CX specialist in Dynamics and Power Platform. But basically I do anything in and around the Power Platform. I'm a consultant and I've been doing it for around six or seven years. And Alice? Yeah, I'm Alice. I'm, I'm a Power BI designer. I love everything to do with Power BI. Um, I'm also a co-founder of Discover AI. Uh, so we're a consultancy based in uh, Melbourne, specializing in Power BI and graphic design for the environmental industry. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so that's the intro. So let's look at what we're gonna talk about today. First, we're going to talk about PPP, PPPQ, which doesn't roll off the tongue, but that's a Power Platform pub quiz. We're then going to have a look at how we did the virt ran the, the Power Platform pub quiz, and there's a few iterations. So we had version one and version two. So we're going to walk you through those, some lessons we learned along the way, and some stories about how we connected the community and how the quiz was a bit more than just a quiz. So I'm going to jump straight in. PPPQ, what is that? So PPQ, it's about the Power Platform pub quiz. We ran a live virtual pub quiz um, to challenge everyone's Power Platform knowledge. We covered Power BI, Power Apps, Automate, Dynamics 365, virtual agents, artificial intelligence, and also some pub trivia along the way. And um, you can just see a few pictures going on here from our first round, which we ran last month, our first episode of the PPPQ. And we had such an awesome time. But obviously, that's not it. So we ran the quiz. But who are the people behind the magic? So this kind of started from a Friday afternoon Teams chat between myself, Alice and Christian which I think was titled um, Catching Up and Sharing Ideas to Keep Our Spirits Up and the Community Connected. And oh, wow, what a, what a chat that was. Alice and Christian came prepared with wine. I went out in my raincoat and sat on a rock. And we had a really good chat and the PPPPQ was born. And we got the Power BI unicorn Greg Nash involved for his Power BI magic. And we sought some advice from, some, from Microsoft we gained their support really kindly and they really helped us out with um, the sponsoring and helping us get things pushed through from a approval perspective. We also reached out to Mark Smith, who's quite a seasoned pub quizzer. Um, he really helped us out with some ideas of how to get it off the ground. And most importantly, all of our pub quiz was powered by the community. So at nearly, I think at least 80% of the questions we asked came from community contributions and these are all the people that helped us to fuel the pub quiz so it was compute it was completely driven by the community for the community so there's a lot of people involved and a lot of awesome magic so you might be thinking right so why are you running a pub quiz there was three main things obviously the whole covid situation hit the world bit of a global pandemic going on and we work at the Power Platform and we're always solving business problems. But we decided that you can also have some fun with the Power Platform and we can use it for more than just learning. So there's a lot of content going around, some amazing content for education. 
But we wanted to do something that would bring people together to connect people, to build our community and keep it alive in what is a really tough time for everyone. And of course, it's not a pub quiz about the Power Platform if it's not powered by the Power Platform. That was a, a technical challenge. So I'm going to tell you the story of how we did it the first time. And there's no such thing as showing as believing as showing you the real thing. So this is version one. I'm going to give you a little overview of the flow. So we use Forms Quiz to gather the scores. We then transform the results and points using Excel online. We leverage Power Automate to get that data into a CDS, a model driven app. And then we used this database and CDS to leverage Power BI so we could look at leaderboards. But I'm going to show you in a bit more detail. So the story starts from. I'm going to jump into quiz mode here, right? So welcome to round seven of the quiz. So we ran all the quiz using beautiful, my beloved PowerPoint. So we read it, read out the questions. And here we are coming here. And users, quiz participants got to use the, um, the forms. So we leveraged forms quiz for people to be able to give their answers. Yeah, Amy, just quickly, I just want to ask a question. How did you get the, um, the questions into PowerPoint? Was that, do you have to kind of manually type them in or? Yes, so that it's one of those things where it was born as a really cool idea like, oh, we'll use PowerPoint, it's great. But this was all a manual job to create this. And then you would go back and change the questions and oh. add one in. There was a few little errors along the way, so that was a little bit painful. Yeah, <laughs> but it looked really cool. As you can imagine. <laughs> OK, so at the end of each round, we're going to submit our results. And this is Forms Quiz, which is really awesome. It calculates points for you. You set it all up and some it's got some really cool, really cool features. At the end of each round, they select what team they're part of and also who submitted the answers. They hit so with the teams, Amy, do we have to um, pre-program the teams or could the could we create a team on the fly? Yeah, so we can create teams on the fly, but we did let people sign up as individuals or teams. So you didn't have to have all your Power Platform friends. Yeah. And we did sign people up, but it was a case of the day before, if you weren't signed up, the bar was closed because we then had to go away in the background and create the teams. And we used a, a lovely team name generator, and hence the reason we ended up with the hot gibbons. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. It was a good giggle there. So we've got our form submitted and then what happens in the background? So if we look at the admin side of the form, we get the responses coming through here. And that's great. It's all in forms quiz. But what are we going to do with that? So from this stage, we're going to open it in Excel. This is just a way of downloading the quiz results. We then got to leverage a really cool part of Power Automate that I did not know existed. So you can actually trigger Power Automate from a spreadsheet. So what we've got here is a spreadsheet that's hosted in SharePoint, which is connected to a part to a flow created in Power Automate. So what I've done is I've downloaded the um, results and I have to paste them into Excel online because the connector won't talk to on premise or a downloaded file, so to speak. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to highlight each row that I want to run the flow on. I'm going to call my flow here. And you can see that I've got one which is linked to. One second, the quiz machine is loading. Yeah. You can see here I've got my flow, so I'm going to kick that off. It's then going to ask me for a parameter and that's going to ask me for the parameter to say what number round is it? So we're actually in round seven. You fast forward in time a little bit and I'm just going to kick off that flow. That's saying it's run successfully. Obviously, I could pop out to the flow runs page and check out what's going on there. But I've also made sure that we can monitor in Excel um, as to what's going on here. So what this is going to do is it's going to magically make our data. You can see we've got some success lines here. I'll point that out later. And now we can go into our model driven app. 
check out the quiz responses and we'll be able to see all the quiz responses that have come through for round seven. Yeah, that's really cool, Amy. But how come we have to use CDS? Like I love Power BI and I often connect up to Excel as kind of my back end <laughs> database. Why, why do we need CDS? OK, so of course we can build a Power BI on, on Excel and that's a very good question. And a lot of people do with great success. But the model driven app in CDS has a lot more power. It ensures that your data is structured properly. So you've got it's a relational database, so I can make links between things. It helped us to make it more of a reusable solution as well, because it's much more robust. You can't exactly delete a column and the world falls apart in Excel, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's much easier to make sure, for example, when we're troubleshooting and building and testing, there's a clean audit of what's going on. So if you've got any problems, it's much easier to get to the bottom of it before it happens to you on Go Live Day. Yeah, and yeah, it looks really cool there. So just to make sure no one thinks I'm cheating, you can see the created on was at 10 past six today. I'm not just cheating and pretending it's like smoke and mirrors. There's real, there's no smoke and no mirrors here. <laughs> so I got my quiz results in CDS, but then if we look at like the dashboards in CDS and the model driven app, they're a bit confusing. They're not very pretty. It's not, not the best. Um, so this is where we come and have a look at how we can show it to the people taking part in the quiz. Yeah, Amy, we've got a couple of um, questions. Um, the first one was, why use PowerPoint separately for the questions? Why not ask the questions in the form? That's a great question. Oh, that's a good one. So we could do that more than definitely, um, but, in, but we wanted people to be engaged in the quiz. And if you put the questions on the form and say, wait a minute, we've got to read that one out. People just go through, start answering the questions. They don't have to be engaged. It's not a real pub quiz experience, whereas we wanted people to be revealed the questions as they came up rather than being able to just go through and put the answers in. Yeah, definitely. We do have another question. Do you think this could be the future of pub quizzes now? I'm not going to say the future. It's a really awesome way to quiz when you can't spend time with each other. Um, but you can't beat a good old pub quiz. Uh, we've got one more cool question that I like. Isn't CDS database very expensive? Well, it depends on how big your pocket is. Anyway, so <laughs> CDS, I don't know 100% off the top of my head with licenses, but it's not as cheap as using Excel. But if we're going to use this as a solution that we're going to share with different countries, different regions, we need a more robust solution than a spreadsheet. Yeah, definitely. Cool, that's it for now. Awesome. Thanks to everyone for asking questions. Yes, awesome. Thank you. Sorry, I should have stopped and checked. I got all excited. OK, so I'm going to hit refresh on this. And you'll see currently, once this loads up, this is our Power BI report, that actually there's not any data in round seven. So we know it's in CDS, but we do need to do a manual refresh on the Power BI. So I believe it polls every 15 minutes, but we do need to do a manual refresh. So let's go away and have a look at this. You can see I've got round seven selected, but we've already got rounds one to six. So what's really cool is that as we went through the rounds, we were able to watch as the results grew. So here we've got round six. We're waiting for round seven's results to come in. And now if I do a little cheeky refresh. We should be able to see round sevens come through and we're just gonna select them all so you can see the journey of how the rounds panned out. So after each round, we're able to go to the Power BI and review the current state of play. And then if we've got any objections, we can also drill down into certain ones. Then we can look at certain areas and see what's going on. And we can also drill down to a bit more detail here so we can drill down to specific people, specific questions, and the specific results that they sent back for each round. So a pretty awesome analytics, but the question is like, so how did we get from here into here? 
And obviously the answer is my friend, my good friend, Power Automate, my power mate, I like to call him. <laughs> but let me walk you through the flow, my little flow behind the magic. Just give me one second, because I've got that stuck at the top of my screen. There we go. Manage your flows. So let's have a look at what this bad boy did. So it's not the most complex flow, but there's a little bit of processing and steps that we had to do along the way to make sure it linked up to the reference data correctly in CDS. So we capture a couple of variables that come from the form. So we capture our team name and our total points. We're then going to look for the round in CDS. So we set up the rounds as reference data. This means we can have an unlimited amount of rounds and also an unlimited amount of quizzes set up at once because we can relate them all to different rounds. So this makes it super flexible rather than being stuck with one or three or five or whatever. So we're going to look up for the round. We're going to grab the round ID and find that record in CDS. And we're going to do the same for team. So for this, we leverage the um, account and contact structure that exists in CDS already. Alice is smiling and giggling. We have another fun question. Go on. Can't, can't we use Power Automate slash VBA to auto populate the questions in the PowerPoint from an Excel source? Oh my God. Can I get your number? We're going to have to chat about that. That sounds amazing. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, I think version two could be um, yeah. a little bit. Uh, we're kind of doing that in version two. So that's a bit of a surprise that's yeah, coming we, up. We yeah. built something cooler. But that sounds really cool to populate questions automatically in PowerPoint. Great. Yeah. I feel like I should know this as a PowerPoint fan, but you scared me off with VBA. <laughs> OK, so we've got our round data and also, yeah, the teams. And so what you might know, if like standard out of the box CDS, we've got accounts and contacts. We rename them teams and team members because the, the hierarchy works really great. So leveraging off that completely, it goes up and looks for the team. Back to the flow. Let's go. And then it goes through and creates our quiz result in CDS. So this isn't the prettiest, and this is the reason that re another reason that version two and three were born is that it's hard coded. So we can have up to um, 15 questions and they are literally just hacked in using spreadsheets and hard coding, which is very bad practice. But it was enough to get us over the line because the thing with this was it's the first time we'd run the pub quiz and there's no point in putting your heart and soul into something for it to be a big flop. So we made sure it was robust enough for the first quiz, but we also didn't want to boil the ocean, build all this bells and whistles complex solution and then not go anywhere. So I'm just going to recap where we got to with the with the solution so far. And I will just check, is there any questions at this point? <laughs> Sorry, no more questions yet. OK, awesome. So as you can see, we've walked through, we've got the answers and forms quiz. We transform them to Excel online, use Power Automate, shove it in CDS and pull it out the other end with a really cool Power BI. There is one thing I forgot to talk about with Power BI that was really cool. So, you know, we mentioned about the teams and how we um, mentioned about the teams and how we let people more than one team member could submit for each round. So what we made sure we did is for the results is that we calculated actually the average score. So if, if for example, three people from the team submitted their answers for that round, we take all those three scores and average them out. So even though people are co-located, they can still work as a team without perhaps having to all submit on one form, which meant that people could have the choice of collaborating on one form or just taking part as a team, but individually submitting their answers. And that was something that was really important to us to make sure that we could do. Okay. But as me and Alice have mentioned throughout this, it wasn't perfect. Rome was not built in a day. There was a painful PowerPoint creation and design problem. There was a really high risk of human error. So copying and pasting the questions from a spreadsheet into a PowerPoint, into forms quiz, there was room for error and there was definitely one that happened, but otherwise I think we're good, but it was a lot of manual jobs. The time from the round finishing to getting the scores out, although it wasn't ages, it wasn't slick. 
Um, we, we planned for it. We did have some fun, good little bit of banter and some good videos in between, but it could have been slicker. Um, and also the hard coded limitations I spoke about. So the number of questions, the teams, for example, that was that was a, a bit of a hard stop. And the manual Power BI refresh was a bit of a killer as well. So after doing all that processing, we then had to refresh the Power BI. And yeah, so there was definitely room for improvement. And I think now we will hand over to how we haven't quite built Rome in a day, but we're probably about 90% of the way to building Rome now, I'd say. So Alice, I'm going to hand over to you to talk to us awesome. through the version cool. two. Thank you so much, Amy. That was really good um, summary. I'm just going to start. Just bear with me one minute while I share my. That's cool. And I will be manning the questions, so feel free to keep coming with the questions as Alice takes over. No awesome. Problem. Cool. Um, so we're going to move on to version two. Um, Amy, you can see my screen. Yeah, all good. All good. I'm going to move you over here. Perfect. Um, so Amy's given us a quick run through about our virtual um, quiz, like why, what, how we did it, um, and how we ran our first event, which was about maybe a month ago now. Yeah. So now I'm going to go over PPPQ version two. So as Amy mentioned on the back of the first event, we had a lot of fun. We had heaps of community members reaching out to us saying um, how much they enjoyed doing the quiz. So we were revamped with this newfound enthusiasm and all these different ideas. Um, and the three kind of areas we wanted to look to refine the quiz was, as Amy mentioned, trying to include more automation in the quiz creation, but also try to streamline the process of running the event on the day. So to try to remove as many manual steps as possible. The second area was to try and share our kind of story of the PPPQ, but also the stories of our community members. So really highlighting um, all the community members who have helped us by submitting their questions and sharing uh, fun facts about them, um, and also kind of introducing them to the community as well. And the third area where we wanted to kind of focus on was um, trying to develop a kind of a package of these tools to allow us to package them up and share them with the global community so that we could really try to expand our reach and kind of impact of these quizzes. So to allow other members all around the world to try and kind of pick up these templates and tools that we've created and use them to run their own community pub events for their own small local user groups as well. So um, we've built on the existing workflow from version one, but we've tweaked it a little bit. Um, so the key elements where we tweaked it were in the forms quiz. Um, so we've modified that slightly so that we have the ability to create teams on the fly. Um, so during our first event, we had a few people sign up pretty late to the event. They really wanted to join, um, but they had to jump onto someone else's team. We couldn't uh, create them a new team. So we've got the ability now to create the teams on the fly. Uh, we've also refined our Power Automate. So the process of automating the transfer from forms um, into CDS, we've kind of refined that a little bit. And um, actually in the version two, I got a little bit naughty. Uh, much to Amy's uh, <laughs> disgust. <laughs> and I took out CDS just for um, one quiz, which we ran. It was for the Power BI user group in Portland in America. And I was just trying to get something up and running really quickly. And I love Excel. Um, so we transferred our results into Excel Online, a much less powerful database, um, but it allowed us to develop a prototype, which we've refined now into version three. Um, but the key change to our workflow was instead of using um, a mix of PowerPoint and Power BI for running the quiz, we've now transitioned to running the entire quiz inside of Power BI, and we're kind of using it as our storytelling toolbox. So I love Power BI, I'm obsessed with it. I use it every day for my day-to-day -day job. Um, but what was really cool about working on kind of a project like this one was the ability to uh, create something for fun. And what happens when you're creating a project for fun is you get a lot more passionate. You get all of these kind of cool ideas coming together. And I found, especially when you're doing design, it really um, unlocks your creativity as well. 
So this was a really cool project for us. Um, we refined the Power BI model by uh, shaping the data a little bit more in Power Query to make it a bit more automated. Um, we also focused a lot on trying to create our own style within Power BI to get a bit of branding out there and share our story. Uh, we also used some cool features in Power BI like buttons and bookmarks and embedded images, as well as having a really cool leaderboard where we're kind of slicing and dicing the data a few different ways now to facilitate all the friendly competition and banter between people. And we packaged it up into a Power BI app, which allowed us to have all of the forms and the videos and our meetup all in the one platform. And we've also automated the data refresh as well. So that's, um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was a fun weekend um, activity and we're just kind of experimenting with different things. Um, but as Amy said, nothing beats a demo. So let's see version two in action. Oh, wait a minute, let's bring this across. Oh, it's not going, I might stop. It's very big, I might stop this one. The part there. Yeah, and let's get this across now. I think all of us from this, we've learned so much. It's all these things you've always wanted to like dig down into and learn more about, but you're like, oh, my customer doesn't want it. It's not important right now, but this gave us a proper chance to really play and dig and explore and like expand our horizons as well. Yeah, no, definitely. No, it was really cool. It's always really fun. There we are. Um, working on kind of creative projects so outside of your um, normal day-to-day -day job. What's happening here? There, got it, success. <laughs> cool, so I've just um, gone online. We'll go into um, the Power BI. Uh, so I'm just currently in my Power BI service and this is the PPPQ app that we created as part of version two. So I'm just gonna go to full screen mode here and we'll keep the navigation up. Um, so this is an this is our um, Power BI kind of report, which we're using to run the quiz. And what's really cool about this is that we've got kind of the story of PPPQ embedded in this app as well. So we can see what is the PPPQ all about. We have our all important house rules on the right hand side here. And we've also got the ability using kind of buttons and bookmarks to meet the PBBQ Quizmeisters, learn a little bit about us. Here we're using some awesome Power BI custom visuals. This is a card browser. We've got a word cloud saying thank you to all of the amazing community members who've submitted answers and questions. Um, and you can see at the top here, we've got our different options to navigate to the different pages. So I'm just gonna walk you through the key pages in our Power BI report here. So now we've got the ability to choose um, the rounds as slices at the top. Um, we've just got three rounds in this example here um, because we ran a condensed quiz for the Power BI user group. But what you can see here now is we have the ability to dynamically filter through the questions and the different options and ask it directly from Power BI. So the big advantage here is this is all data driven we can, as soon as we get new questions, we can automatically update our Power BI reports, which is great. So no more manual typing into PowerPoint, no VBA macros required, it's all in yeah. Power BI. Um, but what else is really cool about this is we've got the ability to showcase the amazing community members here who have submitted the questions. And we use this in between asking the questions just as a bit of banter and to introduce the community members um, to the rest of our networks. So for example, here's Christopher Wagner. He's um, an amazing Power BI leader in, um, he's based in Milwaukee in the States. And he shared his fun fact that in his school days, he's been in a cast member in over 30 different theatre productions. So it's kind of a really cool technique just to introduce our community members. But most importantly is our leaderboard. So this looks pretty similar to our previous Power BI report. You can see we've still got the ability here to review the results round by round, um, but now we've got the ability to drill down into each team, but also to review the data in a number of different ways. So here we've got a matrix where we can review the different answers. Got my favorite visual here, the decomposition tree. 
So you can really kind of have some fun analyzing the data. And we've also got a random prize generator here as well, which is pretty cool. So that's how the Power BI report kind of works. Uh, before I take you through the workflow, were there any questions? No any questions things? that have come through yet. Um, I just, I love, I love watching you do it. I'm so proud of it. It's like, you know, when you have a child and it's like all like really proud of it. And it's just like, look at this beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of evolved. It's amazing. We've each had a turn of um, uh, like refining the tech and the different elements. And that's what's great about these projects. Like this is touching so many different parts of the Power Platform that it's been definitely a lot of fun. So that's kind of the finished product. That's what it looks like. But how does it work in action? So you can see here, I'm in the Power BI app. Uh, if you're in the app, we've got the ability to embed things like forms and videos and websites. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just go through and guess all of my answers. We can pretend that I am doing round one of our quiz here. I don't think I'm gonna get very high marks. Here, yeah, I'm gonna put my name in. And now you can see that we've got an option. I could either join Team Bastion or Team Greg, who are the two teams um, which we set up for this other meetup where we were running this quiz, or we could join a new team. So this is a new feature here. So my team can be PPP, oh, let's see, PPPQ, awesomeness. Am I sure that's my team name? Yes. Cool, so before I hit submit, Let's go and have a look at what's going to happen. So here I'm in um, my flow, so in Power Automate. I've created a flow for PPPQ round one. So there's one flow per form. And you can see comparing this flow to Amy's flow, this is a lot simpler um, because I guess we've transitioned to Excel. Uh, what happens is when a new form submitted, then we get some response details. We add rows into a table. So I've got an Excel online table, uh, which you can see here. And so it just writes the data to my Excel database. And then <laughs> I've got a delay here. <laughs> Amy's laughing. Not a database. <laughs> we've had this conversation. <laughs> uh, then we've got a delay here of 45 seconds. And the reason why I've got this delay is it takes a little bit of time since when we insert new rows into Excel online for it to sync up to my OneDrive and for OneDrive to know it's been saved. Um, and the reason why that's important is because the next step is simply to refresh my data set in Power BI. So we can do all of those processes without any copying and pasting, without even leaving the Power BI app. So this is gonna run automatically. So if I go back to my form here, whereas I was in the app, you just hit submit. Okay, let's see what's happened. So if I just refresh this, so we don't even have to look at this. I've just refreshed it so we can see that yes, this was started six seconds ago and it's running. So let's leave this alone for a minute. And what we would do um, during the break, so when we're waiting for people to submit their answers and waiting for our quiz machine to do its thing, we have all of these, um, we, we made all of these kind of videos of where we're meeting the community. And these are kind of really I fun ways of um, getting to know the real people behind the tech. So I'm not gonna show a full video, uh, but I'll just show a little snippet. Um, Amy, just let me know if you can hear this because I'm not sure if I shared audio. Yeah, yep, I can hear that coming through. All good. Oh, I love cauliflower. Cauliflower rice, you know, turn, yeah. using cauliflower as like a substitute for meats, awesome. Broccoli yeah. is just like kind of hit or miss, you know. Cauliflower can, you know, become whatever you want it to be. So you I'll some, go with cauliflower. And you can have some good sort of contrasting conversations with our quiz host, Amy Holden, on that one as well. Mate. Oh, She's yeah. A broccoli fan. That was she has fun. an I Love Broccoli shirt. Oh, we're going to just, you know, butt heads. Yeah. Be great. So that's just a little bit of our... Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like that one, Amy. Thank you. The, the debate is still ongoing. He brought it up again on LinkedIn the other day. It's still going strong. Awesome. That's kind of what these videos were meant to do. It's meant to get to know the real people behind the technology and try to kind of connect our community. Um, so that's Greg, he runs the um, Portland Power BI and also Power Platform Meetups. 
So he's a big supporter of our um, of our quiz. So if we head back over here, I'll just refresh my Power Automate. So we don't have to do this. I'm just showing you that it's run successfully, which is awesome. And now if I'm, I haven't even left the app, um, I've just refreshed the app here. So I just have to refresh the browser because um, Power BI, it caches its results to make it really quick. And you can see that my new team was added here. I've got my score and it just does it automatically. So that's kind of an overview of, um, of kind of the version two, how we try to automate different features and focus on kind of the storytelling aspects as well. A couple of other cool things that we did as part of the quiz is to try and get the community excitement and try to share the message and um, get people really excited about the quiz and a bit of banter. We made our own um, red bubble swag store. So this is really cool. We've got lots of different designs. Here's one we made for the Portland Power Platform Pub Quiz. And you can see that we've got um, these cool images on all this different sort of merchandise. So people got really excited about things like a shower curtain or a throw blanket, travel mugs, scarves. Um, so that's something really cool. And we got uh, sponsorship from Microsoft and also some other sponsors. And um, we gave out lots of prizes as gift cards to our store as well, which is really cool. And we've also um, transitioned across to using Meetup. Our first event was run on Eventbrite, um, but we thought that Meetup has such a more kind of global reach as well. And it, we're using it as a hub now to store things like photos, different um, kind of videos and share information about the event. So it really is quite evolving, which is awesome. We're getting some good feedback on the Red Bubble store. People are really liking it. So the merch is great for engagement and completely agree with them. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, no, I think um, I'll just go back to stop sharing. I think that, um, yeah, we've had so much excitement about the Red Bubble and uh, we've had people all over the world just going onto the store and purchasing uh, T-shirts and jumpers just for fun. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. I think that was your idea, Amy, and definitely a keeper. Yeah, that was a good one. And as well, we spoke about it. At the minute, it goes through a zero cost, zero profit. So we're not running any profit. But then we were talking about how we could turn this into raising money for charity as well. So any profits we can take and go to charity. So there's room for growth and development and more community power from it as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so just to recap, I think we, while we, uh, created the quiz for kind of a bit of fun and everyone likes the competition. The big focus was really on connecting our community, especially when we're all kind of stuck at home and um, pretty distant. So we, the key things we did to connect our community was the swag store, the red bubble store. Uh, we're also crowdsourcing the questions. This was really cool because uh, we got kind of introduced different people from the community to each other, but also got to share their story with their fun facts. We did our community interviews, so we got to meet the real people behind the tech and also transitioning across to Meetup. Um, that's been really good just to get our kind of event out there and we can um, uh, run different community meetups all on the same site as well. So um, there's a couple of questions, if you don't mind me. Oh yeah, that. perfect, yeah. So did you find you were getting high engagement from the community in the beginning with the pub quiz? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, we had a lot of um, engagement. We did most of our um, kind of marketing on Twitter and LinkedIn and we've had heaps of people all around the world getting really excited. I think at our first pub quiz we had about maybe 50 people, Amy, or? I think we had around 80 sign up and then I think there was somewhere over 60 to 70 that took part. A few little dropouts along the way and people had family to go and tend to but a really, really good turnout for a first one. Yeah, definitely. And people got really excited. Like you can see here in this photo, we had the awesome team from Empire and they fully decked out with their kind of uh, backgrounds. They had cool Star Wars backgrounds for Empire Strikes Back was their team name. They all dressed up. Um, people got really engaged in it. So it was awesome. Yeah, awesome. So we have a question for in version two, the quiz form for each round was circulated to the participants separately or did you share the Power BI? Yeah, so we set, we circulated it separately. 
um, but we could share the Power BI as a template app. So that's something we're tinkering with at the moment, um, and that would allow us to kind of package it all up. There's big plans. And the last one, um, this is really cool. For version three, can you shorten the workflow to forms to Excel to Power BI? Um, so I think, Gwen, well, I'll let you speak about uh, version three, I guess. Yeah, well, I guess um, I'm not really a forms master, but I think that um, it's hard to tap into the Excel behind the scenes. I think you looked into this a little bit, Amy. Yeah, so the challenge is that because each each round has a separate form, if we did all the questions in one form, then we could just interrogate straight in. But because we have one round per form, it's six, six or seven different data sets. Um, so for now, no, we've we've come up with them. Um, so basically, version three, spoiler alert, is um, we've replaced Excel with CDS. <laughs> the final tuning's going into that one, and we'll be using it in our quiz in a few weeks. Yeah, and that one's really cool. That means that we've got a database which potentially we could run this quiz all over the world, and then we collect all of the results into one kind of uh cds secure proper database and we can um then kind of compare different results and do all sorts of analytics on it so no i think version three is going to be really cool yeah also got some suggestions of how we can do and um, run a an olympic style with different countries um so yeah definitely we're on to that we're, we're we're going global awesome i love it i love all the questions that's really great um so just to recap, we've gone through um, the what, the why, the how, version one, version two, how we're connecting our community. And I think we've made it really clear that the quiz, it's more than just a quiz. Uh, we learnt along the way um, a lot of kind of lessons. We've been doing this for a couple of months now. Um, we just wanted to share our kind of big three key takeaways. Our first takeaway is to really try to find your team. So it is, it's quite daunting if you have an idea like this to go out and do it um, by yourself. It's a lot of work behind the scenes. And what we found by partnering, there were four of us um, initially all working together. It's amazing what you can achieve when you have that momentum, when you have other people there keeping you accountable and you're working off their enthusiasm. But also we have four different brains who are all really good at all these different parts of the Power Platform. So we had this kind of melting pot of all these cool ideas and we all just kind of kept taking it apart, redoing it. Um, so I think definitely the Power Platform mantra, even though it's a tiny bit cheesy, powerful alone, better together, it really does work with events like this. Our second key takeaway was to start small, but then to always think big. So as Amy mentioned, we really wanted to get something up and running really quickly. Um, but at the same time, we were thinking about how can we scale this and expand it so that we can share it and grow our impact with the community. And our third piece of advice and key takeaway was to always try and share your learnings along the way. So when we first started the quiz, Amy reached out to a lot of her networks um, and we all did, and we got a lot of cool advice back and that was really valuable. So what we tried to do along the way was to always try to share our learnings, share our kind of tips um, and also just really kind of share the technology as well, because this has been a really fun example of how we can apply the Power Platform to something non-work related. Um, and it's been a really great opportunity to kind of write up the tech in our own personal blog posts and also share them at conference and community events as well, because we spend a lot of time, uh, our own time outside of work, pulling together these events. It's really good to be able to use it and share it with others. Definitely. So what's next? Uh, Amy, did you want to share what's coming up? Yeah, so this is just kind of a bit of a summary of where you can find us, what's going on and how we can, where, where do we go from here? Um, so we have our next quiz. Um, you can join us via the meetup. So there's a link there for you for that one. Um, so we'll be managing all the quiz events from there. Um, the date is to be confirmed. It's either going to be the 15th or the 12th of July. But we will be getting that locked in soon. But if you join the meetup and follow, then we'll be able to keep you in the loop. We obviously would like you to take part in the quiz either by playing 
or by contributing questions. As you can see, we really celebrate people that get involved with the quiz. So if you want to submit some questions, we've got a really nice form that plugs into CDS and creates them automatically for us now because we're lazy and efficient. And so we'd really love to see your questions come through. That would be great. If you really like the Redbubble store, I believe Christian posted in one of the questions that we've got the link there, but also the short link there. If you want to come and you want to get yourself a bit mer merged up, so to speak. We are also looking for people to sponsor future quizzes. And so obviously, like we said, we give out prizes as Redbubble vouchers throughout the quiz. And we're really keen to get other companies to sponsor. Uh, we're getting some really good intake and really good exposure. So if you're interested in sponsoring, I know someone that might. There's also a form for that. And the last thing, if you want to contact us about anything, if you want to help us go global, you've got ideas, big, better ideas. We also have a form for you just to, to do a general inquiry and we can get back to you on that one. And I think the other thing we wanted to add before we close for the last questions is about the upcoming events at Microsoft Reactor. And I'm going to ask Nadia to let you know about what's coming up on these events next. Thank you for that, Amy. I'm just going to share my screen with you all. All right, that should come through. So uh, for those who this is the first time joining a reactive live stream, we have a lot of workshops and trainings that we do, um, you know, throughout the week, during the evenings as well. Um, so you can find us at Microsoft React the Sydney on meetup.com. We do share all our content on our YouTube channel, so you'll be able to find this session uploaded to there in the next few days. If you've got any questions or you're actually interested in wanting to do a live stream with us, feel free to reach out to us at reactorsit at microsoft.com. I thought I'd just take you through a couple of the events that we do have up and coming. Um, so this Thursday night, we have a Build AI Bots for the next wave of computing with Bot Framework. Composer. So that's deploying bots to different platforms like Facebook Messenger or Microsoft Teams. So that's going to be a really interesting session. We've then got a, another one next week on extend and customize Microsoft Teams with Power Platform. So this is looking at building custom app, um, applications, automations in a low coding environment. Uh, and then we have a what is Power BI and why should I care? So this is going to be, you know, a, a session on what actually is it? How can I use it in my day to day? And can I benefit from Power BI? So it's a very beginner session. A lot of these sessions are also being run by the Microsoft MVPs. Um, so feel free to join. If you do have any feedback on today's session, we've got the survey link here, which is aka.ms slash reactor slash survey with the event code 7702. I can pop that in the chat as well to make it easier for you all. So I just wanted to thank you all for joining. Um, we do have a newsletter as well if you want to see what else we do have up and coming, um, or you can find us on Twitter, YouTube, and meetup.com. So I'm going to hand it over to Amy and Alice just to do the last rounds of questions. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you very much, Nadia. Um, I guess I'll share our faces so you know how to connect with myself and Alice if you would like to do so. I'm just going to pop that up on that little screen there. Oh, cool. So if you want to connect with us, that's myself and Alice. Um, otherwise, I don't think we had any other uh, questions. One more just jump in from PJ. How about adding images, video snippets to the quiz form? So that's a good question. I think we looked into this. We used um, images a little bit and um, just to add some fun and spice to the questions. We had a Power App logo and such. What logo is this? Um, so yeah, there's way we, ways we can do images. I don't believe we can embed videos in Forms Quiz, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I haven't looked at that. I think the hardest part about adding images and video snippets to the quiz itself was the fact that we're crowdsourcing the questions. So we're getting the community to fill out a form to submit their question, and they can't actually upload an image to that unless they're on the same tenant, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. So I think yeah, we trialed that and that's my understanding, but great idea. Were there yeah. any other uh, questions or ideas? Oh, there's there's one a question for Nadia, but I think she's going to reply via the means of message. Yeah. So answer coming soon to that one because I've got no idea. 
Yeah, no, I think it really is kind of a work in progress. And that's the best thing about um, about this kind of initiative, I think, Amy, how we keep continually evolving. And it's a great excuse for us to practice uh, and trial out all of these new uh, kind of techniques and things like that. Yeah, um, and I think it's as well like learning new things. So I think for me, like, you know, so I've never touched Power BI in my life. I've always just looked at people that do it and got done it and gone, wow. Last weekend, I picked up the Power BI, ripped all the data sources out, threw some CDS in, tore my hair out a bit. But hey, I've done Power BI and I learned some stuff. I only found the published button four days later, but <laughs> I learned something new. And that's something I never would have done. And I always had it on my list of things to do, but never did because I didn't have to. And it gives you that excuse and that reason and that push to keep trying to learn new things. Yeah, definitely. I know for me, I hadn't used flow too much. Um, I dabbled in it a little bit, but only the templates. So this yeah. is a really cool exercise just to play around with it. Um, but also the red bubble store. I love yes. that. As soon as I saw that, we went ahead and set up a red bubble store for our company. So now we have all this crazy merch up there too. And then was it your, your parents got, was it someone got a present from it? Yes, yeah, for Mother's Day. So we set up a red bubble store. This is Christian. So I did it for my mother in law uh, <laughs> and set up a red bubble store for her so that she had all these photos on different um, merch of her four sons and many <laughs> applications. Amazing. Spreading it out to the world. I think I might just send something for my mum for her next um, her next birthday. She'll be like, what on earth have you done, Amy? Yeah, well, it's awesome because we've had people all around the world um, purchasing it. So we have people in the States, people in England, like it's very cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's all for now. I don't think there's any more questions. Yeah, I think we had a lot during the event, but um, last call, I guess. Any more questions before we wrap up or any ideas or feedback? Oh, there's one just come through. Awesome session. Thank you guys. We completely changed the Power BI interface, courtesy of Alice. Yay. Um, <laughs> oh, I think you need to and you need to get it to the user voice site. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's a really good idea. I like that one. Yeah. So thank you, Garish. Much appreciated. Glad to have you along as well. I guess it's a wrap, eh? Yeah, thank you everyone for joining in and um they're really happy to share what we're doing so far and hopefully see you at some of our upcoming quizzes. Definitely. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for joining everyone and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.